Alrighty, so I have had some questions after my unboxing video. Also read a lot of rules after <laughs> my unboxing video. Uh, they were not black hole tokens, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, welcome back. We are going to go through a first playthrough. Uh, my name is Cassandra. This is Amanda. Uh, Kismet on like everything gaming and Foxy Goo on like everything gaming. <laughs> uh, we played a six player game of TI on Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah. yeah. And so we played all six new factions. Well, six of the seven new factions mm -hmm. uh, because nobody would play one of the originals because we have new toys. <laughs> And we found some really cool stuff. Um, let's see, you played Argent Flight, and I ended up playing uh, the Empyrean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really thought the Empyrean was going to be like super vanilla, based on like what they've got. It's just it looks like it's just going to be the opposite of um, Sardak Nor, mm -hmm. where their, their only thing is punch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And honestly, exceptionally not super vanilla. Like, so far, I don't think I've seen a super vanilla faction. Like. Sardak Nor? No, I meant in the new ones. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, Sardak Nors. <laughs> That's why everyone uses them yes. to start. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, though, because we haven't looked much at what the new. or what the old factions have got for the new stuff. From mm -hmm. what I understand, Sardak Nor got, like, tricks. Oh, that's true. Yeah. They yeah. Do. Like, interesting tricks. Mm -hmm. But for the new factions, uh, we got. Let's see, what did we call them? Baby Dreadnoughts? Yes. Uh, yes. Strike Wing so, Alpha 2. Yes. Stri well, Strike Wing Alpha 1 is still pretty good. Yeah. Um, but those are just baby, <laughs> those are just baby cruisers. Because um, they've got the smaller movement and mm -hmm. the hits on 8. But Strike Wing Alpha 2, yeah, they are, what do they hit on 6? Strike Wing Alpha 2. Cost 1, Combat 7, Move 2, Capacity 1. They're just almost better based on how cheap they are here we got this off of uh board game geek actually mm -hmm. um they're a little bit honestly better than making um dreadnoughts i don't know why i can never remember yeah the ship names when i'm reaching for them <laughs> i mean i didn't i made dreadnoughts just because i needed to make five dreadnoughts to score a, a victory objective. Point. yeah a yeah. secret objective but i didn't Other need them that, yeah and I don't even think you moved them. I'm pretty sure when you scored it, they were all like where yeah, they, they were, were built. They were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, just don't come here, I guess. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> they don't need to die. I just need you to exist. Right, exactly. They're mm -hmm. not going places. They're just like, don't mind the five. It's and fine. I really didn't even make any fighters mm -hmm. because the destroyers were so cheap. That yeah, it, you could either make two fighters that hit on like nines, or you yeah. can make one destroyer that hits on a seven. Right. Like, and carries stuff. Yeah. Like, and anti fighter barrage. Yes. And, and anti fighter barrage that hits normal exactly. ships. Oh, yes. Which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially since we double checked, and anti fighter barrage does hit even if there are no fighters. And so it's just like, oh, I guess anything you have that has sustained damage, let me just. Look at my group of yeah, cards. Yeah, exactly. Like how many direct hits do I have? Right. Yeah. Really cool thing that I didn't get to play because really a lot of the combat happened right near the end of our game. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's my the Dynamo. Mm -hmm. After players in a system adjacent sustain damage, you can spend two influence to repair. Yeah. I was really looking forward to selling that. I was really looking forward to you selling it to you. Yes. <laughs> I was looking forward to buying it. <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> I believe I moved into a space next to four of your PDFs. Yeah, I was ready. Yes, I was like, I want to be there, <laughs> and I don't want to get shot, because yeah. this thing cost eight, and I won't do nice things for you. Definitely didn't shoot you. <laughs> yes, you didn't. <laughs> uh, the Empyrean is really interesting that way, because a lot of it is like, don't attack me, and I'll do nice things right. for you. But if you activate my stuff, you're going to be really grumpy about it. Right. Yeah. And Argent Flight was just like... Well, what I happens if somebody happens. no? If somebody activates Empyrean, mm -hmm. then they lose something. You take a um, something. So there's a couple things. Um, <laughs> That's why see. we didn't activate your stuff. Yeah, because I was very very loud. Uh, Void Watch, the one green technology. I got that super early. Uh, after a player moves ships into a system that contains one or more of your units, they must give you one promissory note from their no, hand. No, thank if you. you will. <laughs> 
was able. Oh darn, I gave them all away. <laughs> yeah, but really, when was the last time you ran out of promissory notes in the six player game? You've got six, or five well, or six of them. I think next five time now. I play against the Imperian, I might. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a victory point, and you get all my money. <laughs> well, they'll give them back to me. <laughs> Eventually, if you make a big enough nuisance of yourself. Uh, and then Aether Stream, after you or one of your neighbors activates a system that's adjacent to an anomaly, you may apply plus one to the move value of all of that player's ships during this tactical action. So so friendly. And it's helpful. so friendly, yeah. Oh, and then also you pair that together with uh, Aether Passage, and it's like, oh, you want to go over there Let me and fight you. that guy over there? <laughs> I got you, boo. Yeah. You can move through me. You can move farther. Just let me know what you need. Right. Yeah. If you're near enough to the dynamo, which no one ever attacks because they all want to get nice things from the yes. dynamo. If you're near enough to that and you're the active player, you can give me money. And I'll use that money <laughs> to heal your ships. <laughs> no big deal. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another one, too. Um, oh, his, uh, it's the, not the hero. Yeah, the hero. No, their commander. Mm -hmm. uh, the commander is when they activate... Oh, there it is. After another player moves ships into a system that contains one of your command tokens, you may return that token to your reinforcements. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you want to attack all of my locked ships? Gosh, I guess I'm just going to move them out again. Yeah. <laughs> or move back in and take this planet back the second you're done. Right. Like, yeah. They, they get interesting quickly, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then Argent, you managed to take Megatol on turn two turn because two. you ran out of money on turn one. Yes. Yeah. Had I realized and done any kind of pre-work, I would have realized that my destroyers have capacity and move two, and, and I could get there, there easily. <laughs> yep. But I spent all of my money and had I think no you influence. Had warfare too. I did have warfare. Yeah. Um, which would have made it possible had I had six influence. Yep. Um, but and you could have probably made some pretty aggressive trades because, like, your three commodity. Right. Uh, but you had my. Um, Is it dark pact? Uh, it's either dark pact or blood pact. Let me see. Mm. It's not that far down. Imperium. Mm. Yeah, dark pact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plays this card face up. When you give a number of commodities to the Imperial player. Empyrean player equal to your maximum commodity value, you each gain a trade good. Imagine that. Right? It's like, well, I'll trade you four for four. I'll get five. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Made all the lopsided trade. It's just even and nice. Yeah. And nobody <laughs> felt like they were getting traded. Right. Which I kind of appreciated about Empyrean. Yeah. Because sometimes it's like, well, but I'm a four commodity race and you want all of them, but I wanted one of them. <laughs> Right. I like using my commodities, too. <laughs> That's why I have four. Exactly. Yeah. The problem with being a four commodity race at our table was <laughs> the cabal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because being a four commodity race with the cabal on the table means that you get your destroyers randomly taken. TVV. I don't know why I wasn't on there. I mean, it was great. And because you were only three. There oh, were two four commodity. She could have taken yeah. two. Yeah, but she didn't want. She, like, your destroyers are better than her destroyers. Yes. And you have so many of them that it would be pointless for her to try and, like, limit your number of destroyers. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't even know how many plastic pieces you get for those, but I feel like it's a lot. I think it was seven. Is it seven? Mm -hmm. So, how many times would she have to steal? A one cost. Well, she just destroyer. wasn't focused on me. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mostly she wanted dreadnoughts, and she wanted those from four commodity yes. factions like me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I don't think I made a single dreadnought. No. no. <laughs> but mostly I was making destroyers and just plopping them in empty spaces everywhere. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to move through me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were everywhere. You, I plugged, was. you plugged up all the holes. Yeah. Well, because uh, also the hero, or not the hero, what's the top one? Yeah, the hero. Commander. Commander? Agent? Agent is first. Mm, agent is first. No, it's the hero. Oh, yeah. Everybody's unlocks the same way. The hero for, um, for them. Yeah, the hero for Imperium. Place one frontier token in each system that oh, does yes. not contain any planets and does not already have a frontier yes. token. <laughs> then explore each frontier token that is in a system that contains one or more <laughs> of your ships. <laughs> and so I just went everywhere. And I made, like, tons of destroyers and just sent them as far away on the map as I could. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh... 
we're just gonna go explore the frontier again. All of them. It's Star Trek, <laughs> the final frontier. <laughs> Everyone watched me play for ten mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like three people went and got nachos. Yeah, <laughs> like, they were like, oh, Cassandra's on her bullshit again. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it's fun to be a race that can be back on your bullshit. (laughs) Uh, But Woolwraith, we didn't have a super aggressive Woolwraith player. I feel like it would have been much more terrifying. It would be terrifying, yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying enough with, like, a chill Woolwraith. (laughs) Like, it's like like the friendly necrovirus of... (laughs) Tell me more. Oh, yes. (laughs) It's like the friendly necrovirus. Like it's, it could be much more terrifying mm-hmm. to play against if it needed to be. But if you give it snacks, then it's not bad. It's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but man, especially since their um, their dimensional tears mm-hmm. are gravity rifts, so they don't have to roll for. Yeah. And so you can just like dimensional tear into a dimensional tear into like just boop boop boop. Right. So she got so much movement, extra mm-hmm. movement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And she then somehow everywhere. we managed to put every single gamma <laughs> wormhole on a gravity rift every single one of them <laughs> just minding my business i'm like oh this destroyer lives here now he's dead to me because i can't move him out of the gravity rift nope nope gamma wormhole that's the one i flipped like <sighs> yep the cabal flipped one mm-hmm. onto her actual um her dimensional tear right so she's like i'm the only one that can move <clears throat> freely off of these ones mm-hmm. Um, she also found Mirage. Yes. That was fun. I really enjoyed flipping Mirage. Um, I noticed it when it was in the punch out board and Mm. I was like, does this just happen? Yeah. And it happens. (laughs) It's just like going through your day, flipping a thing. You're like, oh, what's this frontier card? Oh shit. It's a planet. I found a planet. (laughs) A legendary planet. We live here now. (laughs) And I'm pretty sure that one, when you get it, it flips and it's active immediately, and so you can just use that yep. planet. Yes, yeah, so that was really cool. The yeah, Avil Wraith, she didn't. She mostly captured things during refreshing, mm-hmm. um, which I feel like taking trade as Vul Wraith could be really interesting because people can't say no, right? Like, because like it's not that they would choose not to. I'm pretty sure that you. I have to read it because they might be able to decline. I guess. But they won't. Like, I might. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, there is a bitch I might part of that, yeah. Okay, so it's choose any number of players. Those players use the secondary ability of the strategy card without spending a command token. Mm-hmm. Now, it's a positive effect, mm-hmm. so I assume you could decline. Mm-hmm. But it's either get $4 and they immediately flip into $4. Also, you can make one fewer dreadnought for now. Mm-hmm. Don't get $4. Like, if you're a two-commodity race, I could just definitely imagine just giving the finger to it. Like, mm, no thank you. But, like, a four-commodity race has so, so much money! <laughs> like, what if I wanted all that money? And they can only do it once per round. Mm-hmm. And so, you could also probably barter for, like... There's always at least one other two-commodity race at the table. Yeah. And so you could probably barter for, like, what if, instead, I make you a ridiculously lopsided trade, Miss Two-Commodity, and you take his dreadnought? Right. And that's something that's immediately... Attainable. And well, so have to do weren't it. there some? There were some trade talks mm-hmm. where she targeted somebody and ended up going somewhere else. But again, I wasn't part of it, so I didn't pay attention. Uh, well, no, because it was earlier. She was like, "I'll take from that person," and then during trade, because it's something that can mm-hmm. be immediately mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. And so then during trade, it's like the person that she was going to target mm-hmm. made a better deal, and so she was like, "Well, I mean, oh, it's a better deal. It's a better deal." <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know if she ended up getting her hero. Each other player rolls a die for each of their non-fighter ships that are in... Oh, yeah, she did. did Oh, it was terrible. It It was was terrible, but it wasn't successful on their end, which was why it was okay. Yeah, it wasn't super, but like... Because I had to roll for it in Mechatolrex. Oh, God, you did, yeah. With all my big bad ships. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously they're all in Mechatolrex. I didn't lose anything, though. Okay. And I don't think... I know Ool lost a little. Yeah. She had a couple of pink pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the Nomad was too sparse along that wall because she yeah. had the war, or the war sun, the um, Supernova there. Yeah. Because um, on the six player setup, she was here. And so she had terror, terror, terror. Yes. And so it was just this whole, like, mm-hmm. horseshoe of sadness. 
Um, and so obviously there was somebody chilling here because um, no Frontier Mad, token. Yeah, Nomad went and got the Frontier token mm -hmm. from here. No one can chill here. And then Nomad was here. You were here. Yes. Like just exactly right there. there. <laughs> yes. It was a good space to be in. And then um, Ool was just kind of here. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole round section of over here. Which I feel like Volwraith could have just eaten into yeah. Nomad a little bit more. Um, but by that point in the game, he was pretty well established. Mm -hmm. So I think the crackback would have been interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But like... I just once I just want to see like like let's just devour <laughs> right take all the ships <laughs> I need to get them back mm -hmm. if you um, destroy all the ships in the area with the um, dimensional tear right and it doesn't mention it there uh, maybe it's up here no. I don't remember where they read how to get them back. Mm, capture. Mm -hmm. uh, so abilities, instruct a player to capture a unit. The rules for capturing and returning units vary depending on the type of unit that's captured. If at least one of a player's space docks is being mm -hmm. blockaded, mm -hmm. they cannot capture units from the player who's blockading them. It doesn't say that you give them back. You get a fighter ground force, you don't do the color one. They cannot be returned as part of a transaction, they're not returned because of a blockade. Well, it says right there, return because of a blockade. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, so, capture is the verb for the entirety of the holding of it. Right. Yeah, so you can't have it captured. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just like, if they blockaded, you can't attack them and capture more things. You can't right. have them in your capture, which sounds awful when you say it out loud but i'm pretty <laughs> sure pretty sure that is where they're going with that verbiage man i don't like that no. there should be capture and yes like a zone yes <laughs> right we should name the zone and then get a little dymo and just fix it in the <laughs> it cannot be held <laughs> so yeah so if you blockade them so i guess because it's from the player who's blockading them. Mm -hmm. So if they have a whole bunch of blue pieces and pink comes and takes them out of the game, yeah. do they just keep all your blue pieces? Even after they're out? I don't know. Well, I, don't I don't know, know. either. Yeah. yeah, there's not an FAQ yet, which is awful. Um, but there will be. Yeah. Someday. I'm and sure they'll answer this question. Yes, I'm sure that there <laughs> are. And I'm sure someone in YouTube is going to be like, well, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> and that's going to be great. Because <laughs> I don't know. It's not in the rules. Tell me more. <laughs> right? It says specifically capture starts here and ends here, and it does not mention what happens if a player is taken out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. They are only returned if the player whose unit was captured blockades the space dock of the player who captured the unit. Right. It does not say if they're out. Right. It doesn't say it. So maybe they just keep it. That would be terrible. Well, can you imagine? But like, taking out Vol Wraith to destroy Vol Wraith and another ooh, like that would be worth it. It would because we don't play a whole lot of space risk no, in our meta, so don't. people don't get taken out usually. Yeah, we just win but the like, game. Imagine with if Vol Wraith and like Ool because they were sitting next to each other. Imagine if they decided that. That's what I'm saying. It wouldn't. The Cold be worth War got it. hot. Yeah. Yeah. And so if their Cold War got hot and they just, the Vol Wraith had a whole bunch of Ool pieces, you could just like sneak in and be like, oh, Ool can't make their um, mothership. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone on that side of the board. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're going to take somebody out, I'm into it. Take out two. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. That sounds really intriguing. Um, yeah. No oh, good. This side of the board's all weird. Okay. So that was Vol Wraith. And they don't have special things over here, do they? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Terra Between was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we played against that one, and it's just like, oh, you get to, you get to capture your own stuff. <clears throat> yeah, that one was also very spooky. Um, let me see. Oh, and then speaking of Ool, while we're here, mm -hmm. uh, Titans of Ool, they don't start with a 
um, a carrier, and I'm still salty about that, despite the fact that they have um, Saturn Engine 1s. Yes. Yeah. That's universities. I'm um, looking for Titans. No, nope. alphabetically, this is not where it's going to be. I know how the alphabet works. Mm. Except this doesn't. No, because it just went, well, I'm assuming well, uh, M, what? N, yeah. But I feel like Embers is before Should the be lot. Right? Sar? Come on. That's, a, that's clearly a C. Ooh. Okay, cool. We're here. <laughs> We have minor problems with the document, but beyond that, it's gorgeous and it's very well made, but like it's very out of order. <laughs> um, yeah, they start with a dreadnought, they start with two cruisers, which are the Saturn engine ones. Uh, but they only have capacity of one, and I still maintain, and I understand that Argent Flight doesn't start with carriers either, I still maintain that sometimes you just want to take one little ship, and you want to go, and you want to take two little planets. <laughs> With the same ship. Mm -hmm. And then there's three planet systems now. And so you can't bring two Saturn engine ones to take three planets. And so now, what, you take both of your Saturn engines and... Oh, what else do you start with? And a Dreadnought? Mm -hmm. And all of your infantry? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Literally all of them. And you, you start with warfare. You space dock. <laughs> I mean, the key to it is you start with warfare so you can... Pick up and unlock right? it again. Yeah, because otherwise you just... And who gets to start with warfare? Like... I do. Yeah, once. <laughs> <laughs> I think in your entire That's life... That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. This one time it works, okay? <laughs> we were playing Christmas magic forever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like their starting place. I think they're exceptionally strong, though, and I think that the reason that they start so weak is because they're ridiculously strong. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still, despite the fact that the Saturn engines have capacity out the gate... Not a fan of oh, their starting. Everything else is great though. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a four one that they turn into like an eight nine or something like that. What was it? Uh, Ready Elysium and attach this card to it. Its resource and influence values are each decreased by three and has space cannon five times three mm -hmm. as if it were a unit. <laughs> so that makes Elysium a seven four. Yes. <laughs> because that's logical. <laughs> Ah, yes, a 7 4. It's the then, juiciest diplomacy ever. <laughs> right? Yeah, and then you just t keep taking diplomacy for the rest of your life because, like, I mean. Why not? Right? I've definitely taken diplomacy when I was right next to, like, a tech skip planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, oh, turn the <laughs> Let's do it again. Yep. Let's keep this one going. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we dealt too terribly much with their PDSs, but they have. Sustain damage. We didn't deal with them because they existed. That's true. So we didn't want to get like, fired on at like all. Places with PDSs, but I will say I did get some frontier sections over by his mm -hmm. PDSs because he was so distracted by everything in the <laughs> game. Because the game adds so much. Yeah. Like there is a ton of new stuff in the because game. Because he had PDSs, he also had his sleeper tokens. Yeah, he had PDSs and sleeper tokens. He was turning sleeper tokens into his flagship and then turning mm -hmm. them to PDSs and then like eating his PDSs from one spot to put them in another spot and then just everything. And also he had Wool Wraith like right breathing next, so, yes. down his side. Mm -hmm. So just a one little destroyer just be bopping in and just taking some tokens. It's fine. No worries, guys. Yep, exactly. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how not to get devoured. <laughs> The little Star Trek over here is doing mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> All right, what did they have? Their flagship was spooky because it just shows up places. Yeah, yeah, and it shows up places you don't want it. <laughs> and their sleeper tokens just stick around, so even Forever. if you take their planets, yeah. they're just like sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, they're just being the Titans. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't like that. Um, let me see. Saturn Engine Two. Upgrade has capacity too. Oh, yeah. Which is... Which is better, but I mean, like, are you going to spend a red, yellow, and green early? Sure are. <laughs> For move three, capacity two. Hits no, I know, six. but like early. you'd ha So you start off with a yellow and a blue, so you have to get a red and a green. So it's at least two turns, assuming that you got tech the first round. Or tech skip. Or tech skip, mm -hmm. but you'd still have to untap that the first round. So you'd have to plan around that. Right hardcore. He does have some stuff 
Maybe it was just the Scanlink drone network. Yes, that he starts with. Okay, yeah. And that one helps with prereqs, right? Yes. <laughs> no, he had something where he could exhaust... There it is. Biostims. Yes. You can exhaust this card to uh, at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets that has a tech specialty or one of your other technologies. And then he had another one that was letting him skip prerequisites, or, yeah, prerequisites based on the number of unit upgrades he had, and I know that was a normal one, but... Mm. It's AI development algorithm. When you research a unit upgrade technology, yes. you may exhaust this target and ignore one prerequisite. Yeah. Which is an awesome new starting yes yeah and then the other half was when one of your units use production <coughs> you may exhaust this card to reduce the combined cost of the produced units by the number of unit upgrade techs so he's just like i've got four oh, unit no. upgrade techs this dreadnought's free <laughs> i didn't read the second part of the part of the card ever he was using it a lot i want it yeah <laughs> that's why i knew something like it had something to do with how many he had mm -hmm. i knew because he was using it a lot but it was way across the oh, table man. and i was like i believe you what right what you doing like, I think that, yeah because he was yeah. on the other side of the table mm -hmm. for me yeah he was actually dead across from you yeah and that's yeah, great yeah uh-huh i don't ever not want to have that now yeah. well that and freaking um dark energy tap was phenomenal too i wouldn't know <laughs> i know <laughs> look it was an important frontier token it and was. you ended up getting like four dollars off of it because we traded <laughs> that's what you got the um the dark pact for was oh, me yeah. taking that frontier token. Oh no, but it was fine. I, yeah, no, no, I, I, I never we were the trade Yeah, I'd never yeah. researched that. So <laughs> no, that you kept out. telling me you were going to though, yeah. and I was like, mm, you're not going no. to. And so I took it round one because I was like, you're not going to though. I'm not going blue at all. <laughs> nope. There was no reason for you to go blue. No. But the first half of Dark Energy Tap is that you, um, after you perform a tactical action in a system that contains a frontier token, if you have one or more ships in that system, explore it. Mm -hmm. Easy. The second part, your ships can retreat into adjacent systems that do not contain other players' units, even if you do not have units or control planets in hey, that system, which good. is also perfect, yeah. because I was like, I need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need to not be here anymore. I'm a helper. <laughs> this is what I was here for. <laughs> I didn't sign up for any of no. this. <laughs> yeah. Don't activate me. <laughs> well, then give me a promissory note. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really, don't activate me or you'll have to give me orders. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was much more threatening, don't activate me. Oh, like, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I, yeah. I was being you. Oh, okay, fair. <laughs> it's like when you build four dreadnoughts in your home system and people are like, what's that? It's mm -hmm. like, don't, don't fuck around, don't mm -hmm. find out. <laughs> They're way over here. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to don't do with you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Ignore this stack of dreadnoughts. <laughs> yes, it's within my fleet capacity. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think at the end of the game, when I accidentally pulled ahead, uh, that was, yeah. <laughs> so look, if you have a secret objective unscored, and you have all the stuff for it, and mm -hmm. everybody's starting to heat up, you have to score it, yeah. even if it makes you pull ahead by two points, yeah. and it's a big target, it's yeah. scary. <laughs> so I just built some dreadnoughts. <laughs> do, do, don't mind me. <laughs> Everyone stay over there. As a reminder, don't, don't activate my things. <laughs> Also, as a reminder, you have to tell me where you're activating before I tell you if you can move through mm -hmm. me. Very important. <laughs> yeah. There was definitely some, like, <clears throat> but can I move through you? To where? But can I? It's not how the card reads. No. The card definitely reads after you place your token. Mm -hmm. I can definitely do you a favor and tell you yes now. Um, yeah, after a player activates a system you may allow that player to move mm -hmm. their ships. So they literally are not allowed to lie to you about that one. Right. But people will try. And don't let them. Who else did we see? We saw the Nomad, which was really interesting. Let's see, what all does he have? The company... Oh yeah, he had all of the faction agents. Mm -hmm. And then... He kept getting trade goods. Interesting thing we found out, uh, you can only vote for one side of an agenda. So oh, I think I he only did it once. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't vote for both halves of the agenda and still mm -hmm. get a trade good. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, he only did that like the one time. So, mm -hmm. But yeah, he still got a bunch of money just by like, well, I guess I'm last to go. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It works out really well if you can manage to be... Um... There we go. <laughs> If you can manage to be uh, the speaker, which, I mean, obviously, you can just 
either buy or get the speaker token. Mm-hmm. Um, because then you are the last vote. And so right. you're like, oh, one on this. <laughs> Which I think the biggest vote he ever made was two. Yeah. Yeah. Just because he generally tended, he played to be the speaker, to mm-hmm. be the last vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if he wasn't the speaker, then he was the last voter or something right. like that. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt with you having to vote first. Right, and which, I got an extra six votes. Exactly. Because we had a six-player game. It was great. Yeah. So that was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You, your first vote was seven. Yeah, And then from Every there, time. yeah. Which didn't... Other than the fact... You had Mechatol, and mm-hmm. you had the seven votes, but we definitely could have outvoted you on things, mm-hmm. but for the most but part... Why? Well, for the <laughs> most part... Like, don't get me wrong. There are definitely times that we would want to vote on different <laughs> things, mm-hmm. but a lot of our things worked out well yeah. that... We wanted to all, like, our half of the table, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the Alliance, the Empyrean, and um, the Argent Flight. Mm-hmm. We're all together, and everybody else was like, we can outvote them. And we're like, no, no you, you can't. can't. We have the Argent Flight. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> Argent Flight with Mechatol Rex. You, want, you thought you could outvote me? No. <laughs> Maybe if we all tried together. <laughs> but, like, none of us wanted anything that... Um, Oh, what's it called? The terrifying guys wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the Vol Wraith. Yeah. None yeah. of us wanted anything to do with whatever the Vol Wraith was into. Right. At all. And yeah. So it's just like mostly it was me chilling over hiding <laughs> with um, the Nazroka Alliance. Mm-hmm. And we were all just like, we're just out here to explore and have fun. <laughs> and we're just being explorers. <laughs> He was, like, exploring all the planets multiple Mm -hmm, times. mm -hmm. I was, like, making frontier tokens happen multiple times. Yeah. Worked out very well. He had so many shards. He had so many shards, and all you needed was two. (laughs) You could not get two shards to save your life. Well, and then I I was pretty sure for a little while there that frontier tokens were only shards. Mm -hmm. Because the first, like, five that I drew were all shards, and he was like... I've got this uh, promissory note. <laughs> if we're good neighbors, right? I can give you this promissory note mm-hmm. for things. <laughs> so it worked out really well, actually, as neighbors. <laughs> right. Because Frontier Tokens also shards, also two shards instead of three. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was really nice. And then he kept dropping mechs on planets, which was great. Yes. And so he got to draw an additional card, and so he got to filter through mm-hmm. and like pick either shards because he needed them or not mm-hmm. shards because mm-hmm. he had six to two at the yes. end of the turn right yeah and the um what is it? the relics mm-hmm. were like super good yeah he had really great things yeah the relics i was able to have four secret objectives that's awesome off of the relics yeah mm-hmm. yeah especially since like secret objectives sometimes are a little bit easier to score than like the public one yeah. pointers because the public one pointers like have seven planets and the secret objective is like have five dreadnoughts <laughs> it's like well one of these <laughs> A little bit simpler. Yeah, when you're surrounded with Titans of Wool. Exactly. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe I'll just build on my own squares. Thank you. <laughs> also, don't activate my hexes and exactly. leave me alone. <laughs> no, I really, really enjoyed playing that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the Nomad. What else did he have? Does he have unit upgrades? I don't. He think was also just kind of so. doing his own thing. And yeah, Memoria Two. So there must be a Memoria One. No. No, there must. What does that? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. This oh, to capacity six. Oh, he can upgrade his flagship. Yeah, that's what I that's was what it noticing. Is. Okay. I wasn't even looking up there because, like, why would it be up there? Mm-hmm. You may treat this unit as if it was adjacent to any or to a system that contains one or more of your mechs. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And then, so as a two, it's combat five on two instead of seven on two. Uh, capacity 6, sustain damage. You may treat this as if it was adjacent to systems that contain one or more of your mechs. Anti-fighter barrage. 8 times 3. It's still 8 times 3 up there. You're, yeah. So yeah, it's just the... F- oh, no, sorry. 5 times 3. Mm-hmm. Oh, 5 times 3, yeah. yeah. That was definitely up here. And then the temporal command suite. After any player's agent becomes exhausted, you may exhaust this card to ready that agent. If you ready another player's agent, you may perform a transaction with that player. Ooh. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That I think takes away that you can only trade one promissory note because one per transaction, not right. one per turn. Mm-hmm. So you could definitely do like a multiple promissory note trade or something yeah. like that. Anything that's limited, 
because uh, I think you can only do one shard per transaction, mm -hmm. I believe. I think so. And that also raises that number as well. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, I feel like, are just kind of... Like, Wraith would probably love have loved to do that multiple times yeah. to us. Um, <laughs> but, like, mine, I got back a token if I moved into a space with no planets, mm -hmm. or if I could let somebody else do that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Like, let's be real. I didn't get very much action on my agents. Yours was the one where you got to put um, your mechs forward. Oh, sure and, did. Yeah. <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, like constantly. That's why I'm like, I don't think you know what it is. <laughs> um, especially considering Mechdal Rex had like four different cannons yeah. on it of other people's. And you had a rear... Um, Space dock right behind Mechatol. I was producing on my PDS. Was it okay? It was a rear PDS. Yeah. Sorry. And so you're just like, I'm gonna Whoop. place one guy. Yeah, just one, one, one dude. Just um, on Mechatol though, and it's not activated. No. Don't shoot me. <laughs> you not shoot me. Thank you. Oh, isn't that amazing? More things mm -hmm. showed up. Speaking of things showing up, we still don't. We have not figured out the ruling for an alpha wormhole with, um, mm. or in a asteroid belt. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have um, anti-mass deflectors, mm -hmm. can you ghost ship there? We don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yes, because you're not moving there. Mm -hmm. I also feel like you can leave there. Just because of the wording on anti-mass deflectors, your ships can move into and through asteroid fields. Now the argument could be made that capture mm -hmm. being a zone and Right. Or might mean through means exiting in any way, but it doesn't say exit. It says move through. Right. You're not moving through it. Like if you started on the other side of the alpha and you popped out of the alpha, obviously that's entering or moving through. Mm -hmm. That's different. But if you materialize there, <laughs> like, obviously I go shipped there. So like I feel like yes. <laughs> Uh, but we definitely, that's one thing that doesn't have an FAQ still, no. so I'm really hoping that we get, like, a solid answer on that. <clears throat> yeah. Either on, like, Board Game Geek or Reddit or something. So we're going to keep an eye out for that, but I think you should be able to leave mm -hmm. if you ghost ship there. Right. And I think you should be able to ghost ship there. But I think we, what we landed on is I could ghost ship there, but I couldn't leave because that's moving through. Right. Which I was fine with because that was a secondary frontier token. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like, ghost ship, oh no, frontier. <laughs> like, oh, I made a new one. <laughs> How strange. <laughs> like, look at all of these empty spaces. I was here, I was here. So this was my home state. I was mm -hmm. here, 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 and here. And then blue was here and blue was there, even though he lived over here. But, like, I had a bunch of, <laughs> yeah. like, just, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And especially, it's really nice because you can get back one of your tokens. Right. So, like, one of those moves is just free. Mm -hmm. And so I almost never make destroyers, but I was constantly making destroyers in they this game. They were everywhere. Yeah, there's just destroyers all over. Mm -hmm. And, like, okay, activate my systems, I guess, if you need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, pay, but I mean, <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> And I could let people move through me. Right, so yeah, it didn't so hurt anything. It, yeah, it wasn't everywhere. like I was being in the way. Yeah. Yeah, like, as long as you have a move too, which I understand isn't always a thing, but for the most part, just don't activate my systems and I'll let you right, know. It's fine. It's, fine. <laughs> it's very much in the, the theme of TI. It's fine, guys. Right. Like, it's it's one it's ship. Fine. Fine. It's fine. It's just I know one. it's next to your own, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's just for one turn, it's fine. <laughs> It's like, they should just have it on the box. It's fine. <laughs> Twilight Imperium. It's fine. <laughs> it's like a little, like, yeah. 50s jaggedy thing on it. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, the Nomad. We didn't see a ton of how the Nomad did. They seemed really interesting, mm -hmm. though. And then I just had them up. Where did they go? Aha, the Alliance. We saw them a little bit more. Okay, I'm just going to search. Oh, I can't type. Oh, Alliance is a cart now. <sighs> there we go. Raka is not a word. <laughs> there we go. So they started off with psychoarchaeology, so mm -hmm. they're like the exact opposite of the Empyrean. They're just the planet side of it. Yep. Um, and yeah, like we said, they get the extra card, and then they get to purge two relic fragments, and I know you never got to experience it, but <laughs> Black Market Forgery was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, 
Because, like I said, we were neighbors and we didn't want to be fighting. Yeah. So, well, I see you've got two shards there. <laughs> Would you like to turn those into something? Imagine that. Don't activate me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. A lot of trades in TI are sub <laughs> subtext. Don't activate me. <laughs> Please. I don't think we saw his flagship. Your mechs in the system roll one additional die during combat. One thing that he was really galled by was his mechs. He never like picked them up. Yes. And then he had space combat, but he didn't hadn't picked them up yet mm -hmm. because you have to pick them up before you move or after you move. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, he almost never ended up having his mechs in space when he right. actually needed them. Yep. But that's because mostly instead of attacking, he was getting attacked, and so it's much more <laughs> of like a like fighting other people kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if he wanted to just like load up battle bots, he probably would have been much more pleased with the Z grav right. Eidolons. Eidolon? Yeah. I can't think of another way. Mm -hmm. Eidolon. Anyway, he probably would have been much more happy with them if he was in fact attacking. Right. Yeah. Um but yeah, their combat eight times two in space is really cool. Um except that they lose sustained damage when mm -hmm. they're in space, which I feel like it's flavorful. I feel like that makes sense. Yeah. Because like if you get shot and you're a mech, like there's no air inside yeah. your air anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like the, your mech people got blown into space. <laughs> They're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, reasonable. Right. Uh, prefab archaeologies. Oh yeah. After you explore a planet, ready that planet. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I mean it's three green, so it's a little bit later in the game, but that's mm -hmm. still super good. Yeah. And then supercharge, at the start of combat round, you may exhaust this card to apply plus one to each of your unit's combat rolls during this combat round. Mm -hmm. I saw that one actually used, because um, he already had AI development on Right. Yeah. I feel like this honestly could be a good, like, two green starting race. Yeah. Um, but even with the develop, the, the single cost ones are so much better now. Because, yeah, the AI development al algorithm is the one where you can produce for free. Mm -hmm with having unit upgrades. Um, but yeah, Psycho Archaeology is super good. Sling Relay was like baller. Yeah. Because uh, everyone's, you just don't, you don't always want to like produce on your home system, but to, right. like you want to produce on your home system. And Sling Relay, it's one car or one ship, but like, mm -hmm. it's one ship. Yeah, that was how you were getting all your destroyers. <laughs> it was. <laughs> like, well, I guess I'll just go. I'll just sling it. I've got one token left. Somehow nobody took warfare. I guess I'll just make a single destroyer and just yeet it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was, yeah, I really liked Sling Relay. It's not for every, like, build, but I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that one. And it works super well with Sarween Tools as mm -hmm. well. Because um, it is produced, right? Yes, produce one chip. Yep. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. Versus something where it's like, make a thing. It's like, hey, place. you didn't. Yeah, place is the worst <laughs> word. <laughs> Unless it's on ghost ship, yes. then it's the best word. <laughs> I didn't go there. I placed it. Uh, Scanlink drone network. That was the one um, when you activate a system, you'd explore a planet that contains one or more of your units. Yeah. That one was super handy. Um, and then predictive intelligence. At the end of your turn, you may exhaust this card to redistribute your command tokens. When you cast votes during the agenda phase, you may cast three additional votes. If you do, and the outcome you voted for is not resolved, exhaust. Mm -hmm. So, like, sometimes you just want to rearrange in the middle. Yeah. Like, oh, heck, somehow, like, I only have two ships anywhere, and I really want to do the bottom stuff something sometime. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's an action, too, I believe. No, it's at the end of your mm -hmm. turn. It's not mm -hmm. an action. So it's not a stall, but, like... But still, sometimes... Yeah. It's so much better than Graviton Laser System. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Graviton Laser System, I don't know. I don't I don't think I ever get it unless I really need... A yellow. To get through yellow, yeah. yeah. And I almost never end up playing, like, yellow races either. Yeah, I think the only time I've ever had Graviton Laser Systems was to get Integrated Economy. Yeah. Yep. And, and it was yeah. great. Yeah, because well, Integrated Economy is amazing. Um, gra Graviton Laser System is like a step. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not quite the same idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like um, <clears throat> Dax of Animators. After you win a ground combat, you may place one infantry from your reinforcements on that planet. 
Okay. Biostims, you may exhaust this card at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets that has a tech specialty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or one of your other technologies. Like, mm, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, the original ones have spaces where they're used. I just really like a lot of the Zeros ones. I'm just really excited to see the new tech builds. Mm -hmm. with all of the old races. Right. Because we know the the general tech paths of everybody else, basically. Exactly. Well, then how is this going to change yes. everything? Yes. Yeah, because, like I said, we haven't even looked really at the heroes mm -hmm. of the original races yeah. or, like, any of the reds. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, we've looked at these six. We didn't even look at the seventh new one yet, and it's just, it's so much more information. I'm excited for our next game. I am super, super to get excited. To, I think, because I'm sure somebody... Several people will pick some OG races yeah, to see their new heroes. I, I really want to play a Sarl at some point. And the only thing I know is Suru's in it. I really want to <laughs> play Necro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> it really is. Let's see. So we're going to end up with a Sarl and Necro. What else does everybody usually play? Jolnar. Yeah. Great. But like, we don't have like a Jolnar player at our table. Does that make sense? I am the Jolnar player. <laughs> I know, but you want to be Necro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's like usually if there's a Katamari and Damasi on the board, it's me. Yes. But I'm also our Asaro exactly. player. <laughs> Sarball. Oh, but Sarball's going to be so Sarball's good. So good. Yes. <laughs> Sarball's just going to be like doing its best life, rolling through the galaxy. <laughs> like, I'm exploring that. I'm exploring that. Explore <laughs> yeah. that already. Gonna explore it next round. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, psychoarchaeology with Sarball. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, be still my heart. <laughs> the only thing I'm sad about is I don't think that they've updated any of the starting texts, which, I mean, obviously it doesn't make sense that they would, but like, it also would make sense if they did. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's a clan. I'm sorry. It's all the way up in C. Let me see. Uh, yeah, no. They still have anti-mass deflectors, which obviously they have to. Mm -hmm. And where's the oh, they only start with anti-mass yeah. deflectors, yeah, which is reasonable. Um, but that just means that you have to work on getting both psycho archaeology and dark energy tab. Mm -hmm. Which honestly, since you get a dollar for every plant that you take, it's probably psycho archaeology first, mm -hmm. and the dark energy tab later. Assuming nobody has taken all of the tokens, right. unless you know that, um, unless you know that Empyrean is in. Uh, because obviously they bring them all back. Right. Yeah. So, but even then, you know, Empyrean's going to be trying to sit on every very, yes. single. But I mean, you're a Sarball, so it's like, oh no, a destroyer. But like, just... ooh, what about my my cards though? Notes? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't activate me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play against. Don't activate me. I just want yeah. people to not activate me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I've only seen I've seen Sar played once where it was like. Don't take my home system. And I'm like, but, but why? But why? <laughs> <laughs> the, your home system, like, I can leave behind my home system for you. That's yeah. like an incentive. Exactly. Like, hey, let's be friends. Look Have some asteroids. System. Yeah. We broke a planet in half special just mm -hmm. for you. Just for 50% off sale. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I'm really excited to play Sar again at some point. Mm -hmm. Just because, just watching it just go through, just yeah. demasiating its way. <laughs> And I would say that, like, like Sling Relay is terrible for them. Absolutely trash. Mm -hmm. uh, because they move, and then they produce every right. single time. Yeah, so yeah. you don't need that. Yeah. Because they've definitely done some... I thought it was understood. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, I'm just going to move my, um, my floating factory there. It's fine. And then... Like, you know, you gotta build a couple things when you mm -hmm. get there. So, like, maybe it's a fine. dreadnought or two. And then they're like, there was there, why are there two dreadnoughts <laughs> directly next to my home station system? And then you pull it's out the, the Twilight Imperium words. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Look at us being fine. Look Everything's at us. Fine. We're so fine. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why, but TI is just such a game of. Just don't look at me. Yeah, don't watch. <laughs> don't. Mm. I'm, I'm not here to be witnessed. I'm sorry. No you don't see any of this. It's no. Fine. The man behind the curtain. <laughs> like, mm. 
Uh, no, I'm really excited to see some of the new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but this, honestly, this first game, uh, we got cut a little short, but honestly, this first game was a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. And, like, oh, man, Vool Wraith is terrifying. And I am interested to see them in a more aggressive game. Yeah. I feel like they had a bit of a plastic problem, but that could just be because we had both spend eight resources and spend eight influence on the board. And so yeah. we might have been a little... And then we had the new one that was spend... Three, three, three. Yeah, three, three, three was really cool. Yeah, yeah but still made, like, expensive. It is very expensive, but I feel like it's less because mm -hmm. I did it with a two top and a dollar, three dollars, so four all together, and then a three bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's two planets and four dollars, which I feel like that's better usually than I end up spending for like the eight resources, mm -hmm. which, if you're lucky, is eight dollars, which is. <laughs> So yeah. many dollars. Yeah. Do you know how many like lopsided trades that is for, for anyone real. except for Hakan? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Hakan though. Oh, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> oh, imagine Hakan <laughs> on a board with Imperium. Yeah. Yeah, because they're like both just like vaguely different. I'll help you, but don't attack me. So people. many friends. So <laughs> many friends. <laughs> the Cold War just got rich. Yeah. Instead of the Cold War, it's just the bougie war. Yeah. <laughs> like, <And yeah. laughs> yeah, right. There's just gonna be one side of the board's gonna be the bourgeois, and the other side of the board is gonna be with Bull Wraith. And they can find <laughs> it out. Getting eaten I don't need any of for that. For all directions. <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. Bull Wraith versus Arborek. They'll just yes. each other. Because <laughs> Arborek just roots. Yes. <laughs> But honestly, I don't know if Wraith could get them off a planet. I don't I don't think so. No. Like they only have one bombard ship like I'm so everybody excited. Else. Yeah. Yeah. And then they you don't roll with their hero for um dudes. Like um for ground forces mm -hmm. with their hero. There. Um non fighter yeah, it's only ships, so you right. have non fighter ships. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to see. And then Crucible, we didn't read Crucible, because uh, I was going to go and get Volraith's Crucible. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, your ships do not roll for gravity rifts. So Volraith can only move off of their own gravity rifts. Mm -hmm. uh, but with their promissory note, you get to not roll off of any gravity yeah. rift, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, it's almost like how the top of... Um, Diplomacy used to be better than the bottom of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not quite as bad, though, but still, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But I do like that their dimensional tears count as gravity rifts for their unlock for their commander, because obviously, otherwise, it's impossible. Right. Yeah. But yeah, dimensional tears kind of scary, because you can just, like, railgun your things just yeah. <laughs> into the world. If you line them up, well, that's Well, like, that's what happened. Yeah. Was about round three, she said... Did I just make a highway mm -hmm. to anywhere? And that's what she did. No, she, she didn't could... make a highway. She made a railgun. Yeah. <laughs> just get into space. Yeah. <laughs> get in the car. Right? <laughs> Put the cars over there. <laughs> like, ugh. I would have let her move through <laughs> yeah. <to you. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. I don't want any of that. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> you can it's go fine. that way. I promise. You have to tell me where you're activating before I agree. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I, I wasn't really scared of Nazaroka, but Nazaroka seemed like a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Nazaroka and Empyrean played a lot, their own kind of game, where they're just exploring the universe, living their best lives. Don't look at me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I will be good friends with you. Yeah. And then, obviously, Vool Wraith is terrifying, just absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the Nomad, haven't quite figured them out. They're doing interesting things. Titans are horrifying. Um, they're super good. Mm -hmm. They start, like, hobbled for a reason, and that reason is, oh my god. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh. Uh, also, though, interestingly, if you look at the six-player setup, um, there aren't that many, like, here has four planets. Well, maybe there are, uh, I think it's just on this side. Because, yeah, there are a couple of four planets. There's no six planets, though. Mm-hmm. There's no five planets, or there is a five, and this is a three-planet system here, number mm -hmm. 75 is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's five planets on two tiles, which right. is weird. Um, so everywhere has an empty space, and I'm sure that's because of the, um, 
the things that you get. The Frontier Tokens. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that's because of the Frontier Tokens. Um, because obviously they want to make a six-player game set up that works with the Frontier right. Tokens. The original one doesn't have nearly as much empty space. Mm -hmm. Though that's Hyperlane, so that's the wrong one. Uh, and I think that's because... Here, if you look here... No! There are a there few. Are three, yeah. But if you look, six planets, four planets, mm -hmm. four planets. Like, four almost feel, like, cheap. Like, here's mm -hmm. five. And then, obviously, like, we said six is a good one. But I feel like, usually... Where do I normally aim? One of these is a green tech skip. I feel like I always need something with a green tech skip. Mm -hmm. So I end up taking that. That's a red tech skip. But now skip. you don't, yeah. because Biostims is a great... Yeah, here's a yellow... Yeah, I, I can't remember where I normally start. Um, I normally I normally start here if I move out because I can get to here, but I don't want. But he can't <laughs> but, get to you. Yeah, and there's five planets mm -hmm. instead of four mm -hmm. and a ridiculous sun that does nothing for me. Yep. And if I want that sun, I can go get it. <laughs> it's not that far away. All right. I will say Muat has ruined my like ability to know how much a war sun costs, <laughs> what it rolls, how far it moves. <laughs> yeah. I'm always convinced that they cost 10, and they have sustained damage, and they can't be direct-hitted, and they can definitely be direct-hitted, yeah. and I'm like, what? Because if you look at Muat, a prototype or sun too, mm -hmm. no, maybe theirs can. I thought that their war sun 2 could not. Interesting. I'm not sure. Yeah, it doesn't say it here, and you, you, you'd think it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then... Here, yeah, huh. So it doesn't say, but it does definitely remove planetary shield, and it only costs 10. Uh, the prototype Warzone costs 12. And oh. it's got move 3. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just has 6 fighters inside of it. Just get in the car. <laughs> We're going places. <laughs> yep. And then Bombard 3 on 3, which... Ooh. I'm pretty sure it's 3 on 5 normally, isn't it? be wrong. More sun. No, it is three on three. Mm -hmm. But yeah, their move is two, and their combat is six, normally. Yeah, it's just better. Really? But look at their hero Can't ability. After, oh yeah, what's your hero ability? After you move a war sun into a non-home system other than Mechatol Rex, you may oh, destroy okay. all other players' units in that system. And replace that system tile with a Muat Super Dumbo tile. I know. If you do, purchase card. <laughs> yeah. And it each looks, planet card with a replace tile. It looks like a Muat. Like, it looks like the war set, but it's got the Muat in the corner. And it's just like, <laughs> so This is, like, this, worse than the Yin the, flagship. No, it's so much better. <laughs> the word is better. I, I know how, how straight, how hard it is to find the right one. Um, no, so they were talking about how uh, when... In gameplay, it, they had to be talked out mm. of making this uh, l able to get home systems. Like, it, yeah, <laughs> in no, beta, you. you could just roll into a dude's home <laughs> system and just smack down a sun and be like, what? <laughs> Our meta doesn't play that way. <laughs> no, I know, but you could. But you could. Well, you do when the other player's at nine. That's true. Yeah. You don't when the other player's at like three, but you do when the That's other true. player's at nine. Yes. Yeah. Like, well, just roll on in. Just roll things to do. <laughs> right? Got places to be. <laughs> and then, let me see. So the agent exhausts his card to choose a player. That player may produce up to two units that each have a cost four or less. This is it contains one of their war suns mm -hmm. or their flagship. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then, produce a war sun to unlock your commander. Oh no, that's so hard. Oh darn. <laughs> and then after you spend a token from your strategy pool, you may gain one trade good. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna go there. Get yeah. A dollar. I'm gonna go mm -hmm. there. Get a dollar. Oh, strategy. That's the bottom no, one. So, right. Yeah. So I'm gonna pay for a tech. dollar. Yeah. Exactly. That's interesting. All right. Let's see what is Necro. Like, what's the virus's name? I probably could have searched virus and found it, but that's not how I did it. There we go. Virus. All right. Let's see. Hero, choose a planet that has a technology spe specialty in a system that contains your units. Destroy any other player's units on that planet. Mm -hmm. Gain trade goods equal to that planet's combined resource and influence values and gain one technology that matches the specialty of that planet. Interesting. That's okay. 
Yeah, you won't always have another player's units on that planet. Mm -hmm. But that is interesting. He's like, oh, I'll just do a tech. <laughs> and then unlock with t getting both of your techs. Or getting three technologies. Yeah. After you gain, you may draw an action card. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. pair that with your hero. Yeah. It's like rolling through. What's their agent? You may exhaust this card to choose a player. That player may discard one action card or spend one command token from their command sheet to gain two trade goods. Mm. So I mean, if you've got some, like, terrible cards. Yeah. It's like, oh, more money. But I don't feel like Necro draws a lot, so that one feels very much like a, hey. Yeah. Hey, I'm a friendly virus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> friendly virus. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's look at at least one more now, because we're on a roll. The Asarl Tribes. Hero. Each other player shows you one action card from their hand. For that, for each player, you may either take that card or force that player to discard three random action cards. <laughs> I feel like somebody read this one to me. So it's just like, you can either show me your good cards or you can lose them. <laughs> like, it's your choice. <laughs> right. It's magnanimous. <laughs> Uh, unlock has seven action cards. That one just happens. Mm -hmm. uh, after another player activates a system that contains your units, you may look at that player's action cards, promissory notes, or secret yeah. objectives. But you just look at them. You don't mm -hmm. take one. Hmm. Mage hunting plans, you get to look at it and mm -hmm. take it. Also, it's not an action. So I feel like they just want more actions. Uh, this card has the text ability of each other player's agent, even if that agent is exhausted. That's my boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I do what I want. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes. <laughs> like, oh, how interesting that we can do that. Yeah. Hmm. I'll do that one this time. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, and I think this time, I think I want to get an extra two-man token. I think this time. So, yeah. Get... Yeah. No, I like that a lot. Yeah, no, that's the main updates for them. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else you want to look at? Uh... Let's look at Jolnar. And then look. Yes. <clears throat> Universities of Jolnar. For each non-unit upgrade technology you own, you may replace that technology with any technology of the same color from the deck, then oh. purge this card for each. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for the hero, you have to have three points. Like, are you going to get to three points without having every tech in the deck? They do things other than tech sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if I believe this. It sounds real fake. Especially fake. Um, but it doesn't have to be the same level, so you can trade all like your zeros for threes. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because eventually the zeros become yeah. unnecessary. They're but they're great in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Own eight technologies for your commander. You don't have to go in commander hero order, thankfully. Yeah. After you roll dice for a unit ability, you may re-roll any of those dice. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's just for, like, um, PDS, or, like, Space Cannon and stuff like yes. that. Still interesting. And then when a player spends resources to research, you may exhaust this card to allow that player to remove any number of their infantry from the game board. For each unit removed, reduce the resources spent mm. by one. So you know who their new best friend is? Who? Plants. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was like, I think plants and plants. humans are like, hey, hey y'all. Yeah. Hey, it's my favorite fish. Exactly. Hello, <laughs> favorite fish. <laughs> you wanna? You wanna Can help me out a little bit? Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any infantry, no. so that doesn't help them nope. at all. Like their infantry are inexpensive to make, exactly. but they don't have any, no. and also. They don't spend money for tech. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't have to, at least. Yep. I guess if you only want one, you don't have to. Still. They never have to spend a dollar on a tech if they don't want mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And they can always get two if they want. Yep. But for six dudes, that's an opportunity to yeah. cost at that point. Yeah. Especially considering you only start with, what, two? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. two infantry. Mm -hmm. It's rough. It is rough. It's a rough start. Yeah, you only start with one of every tech. I mean... <laughs> I'm telling you what, okay? It's not hard not if, you, if you're real smart, but you only got two dudes, it doesn't do very much. It's the opposite of the Titan's rule. If you're real deadly, but you have no way to get your deadly dudes places, it doesn't help that much. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Titans was... They were scary. Yeah. I was glad they were on the other side of the board. So was I. Because <laughs> they got real big, and, like, even the, like, chompy chomps were yes. keeping them at bay. Yeah. Because they were like, we're just going to grow beyond the chompies. <laughs> like, ugh. No, I really like all the stuff that it's added. Mm-hmm. I like the uh, mechs, how they change the way that ground mm-hmm. combat mm-hmm. feels. Uh, not the way it works, but the way that it feels. Right. Because uh, obviously if you're going to look at two planets and one of them has a mech on it and one of them doesn't, mm-hmm. you're going to look at the other planet. Yeah. It's just how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's added a ton and I really think that... Like, I didn't feel like the game was stale until I played it with the expansion. Right. And then I was like, ooh. Yeah. This is a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Like, because it's a ton of fun. Other, I wouldn't play 12 hours of a game that I didn't think was fun. Right. It's the most fun yeah. game to lose, yeah. which is phenomenal because you can't win. Always. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, having played with the new stuff, it makes it mm-hmm. considerably better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they keep doing. I want a living rules reference. I want some FAQs because I have some questions <laughs> that I need to ask frequently. Exactly. The table is done with my rules lawyer shenanigans. <laughs> they're just they're just done with it. Uh, but no, no, I'm really pleased. Yeah, yeah I had a good time. I'm mm-hmm. excited to play again. Yeah, it's gonna be a good times. Excited to see how all the new races go. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to hear about all the things that we missed. Uh, <laughs> In the <laughs> yeah, no, I really love it actually. So I mean, there's that because <laughs> it's hard to like find all the things, and we're not going to script it. Yeah, and that's the only way that you could is if you scripted it through. So we don't do yeah. that. No, we don't do that. <laughs> I barely had time to find all of these resources. They are literally still in their Chrome tabs. Like, no, <laughs> we are not going to script it out. But we are definitely going to continue playing just an ass load of Ti. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm ready for all it. the things. Ready for all of it. Yes, so ready. All right. Well, that has been First Views, Twilight Imperium, Prophecy of Kings. We did it. We did it. Yeah. <laughs>